hell big. What's up, Matthew Smith? <laughs> I'm in a funny mood. Dude, it's good to, to be back here. It's good to be looking at this crazy, crazy hacking finance email that caused a little bit of conversation in our Slack channel this week. This one's definitely on the weirder side, and I guess... We're fans, but we're, I think we're going to talk about why people might be a little up in arms about this one. Now, just to make sure that we're both on the same page, we both did just take a bunch of ayahuasca, right? Yeah, I've, I've been microdosing for a while. so. Okay, okay. So that's why this email looks this way, mm-hmm. correct? Yes. Okay, just... Just triple checking. Cool. So do you want to start with telling a little bit about like the kind of internal controversy we were having about this email? Well, you know, you get something like this in your inbox and it definitely catches your eye. And I think it really kind of goes against the idea that, you know, email has very specific rules that need to be followed. And this is how a newsletter works and it has to fit in this grid. But I think when you tell, you know, non-email people to maybe try to do a funky email, this is kind of the outcome. Super interesting, dude. So the site completely looks like this and is really wacky and interesting. And what what's fascinating to me about it is this is a experience where there I'm a fan of a book called Zag by Marty Newmeyer. And it's like when everybody else is zigging, go zag, like go the other direction. And I think they're doing that here. Like they're doing something really wacky. Like nobody thinks about finance <laughs> in this way. You know, this is completely insane. And I love it. I think that's pretty fascinating. So one thing that I think is great is despite this complete insanity that's happening in the background, I very quickly can read. Like the places where I need to read, they've made it very clear to do that. And I really appreciate that. I think that's fantastic. They've done a nice job of like making it some, you know, very like scannable content. And it's crazy and interesting. And I think it's a fantastic experience. I'm really, really curious about how this is going to go for them. They've done a great job. If they're going to be wacky, then they also didn't just do pure left alignment. Like they break up this stuff into zigzag and they use lots of different colors for their headings. They did a great job of pairing typography, getting big, bold headings, and then, you know, a nice little byline, and then this body copy. And um, I think one thing that isn't completely clear is that this is the link in the the scannable reading area. Mm -hmm. Um, So maybe underlining that or maybe like in addition to that, providing a read about hacking finance movement, stop doing stupid stuff, like whatever you want to say in in your secondary CTA. If you did have a secondary CTA, my preference is when people don't just say read more and they don't repeat like the heading, but instead like they allude to what's coming in the rest of the article. That's my favorite. So yeah, I mean, I think you look on on mobile It just looks fun and crazy and weird. I think for me, mobile is definitely the better experience. Um, One interesting note, I think if I think I looked at this in Outlook where uh, image backgrounds maybe not have the best support, but for those image backgrounds, they're picking the one color from that general image to use as the image background. And I almost think that actually might look a little better, actually. I think these crazy backgrounds definitely work on mobile because you kind of like see them sort of peeking through. Maybe making these solid colors might actually be a, a little bit better. I think the, the question for me is there are some universal principles of design. And then there is what can your audience, you know, what are they willing to kind of deal with because they think it's interesting or different or unique or, you know, whatever. You know, when the iPhone came out, those interfaces were super new and required everybody to learn. And that was a friction point, but it was so amazing and so interesting that people were willing to do it, right? So that's the kind of situation that you're looking for is to to meet that edge. And I think they're doing that really well here. Yeah, I like the idea behind this email. Going off that top section, I almost was wondering if with that logo where it says monthly, I wonder if that is a preference where if they might have like a weekly one as well, that'd be an interesting cadence. But I think for this monthly one, you know, you're saying your three favorites from January, it really makes me focus into this email. And each of these articles feels really handpicked and curated. It makes me like interested enough to really click on these versus maybe showing me just a list of blog 
post links or something. I'm into it. Cool. I'd, I'd love to hear from Hacking Finance if they want to let us know how this went and what they're learning about their emails. In general, like any of you all who want to submit your emails for Feedback Friday, we'd love to see them and we'd love to hear your metrics. Like I know that's tough to share for some companies, but some of you can. And being able to share, like that's what this community is all about. We want to be transparent. We want to share cool stuff. So we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Let us know what you think about this email, even if it maybe gave me a little bit of a headache looking at this for this long. <laughs> but let us know what you think about these ones and uh, send over some weird, strange, artsy emails in our inbox. We definitely enjoy getting them. Sweet. All right, man. What are you doing this weekend, dude? Uh, mostly more just uh, some weird drugs. I'm just going to like figure things out. I'm going to definitely uh, bury myself in the sand and Mm -hmm. take, you know, dose up on some acid and then have my eyelids peeled back and let the sun scorch them a little bit, see if I can get a vision. I think I saw that like on Goop or something. Yeah, I think uh, Gwyneth is really into that kind of stuff. Yeah, it sounds like a good detox, really. So enjoy your weekend, Matthew. (laughs) You too, my bud. See you, bud. See ya. Bye. If you have any feedback on the series, please leave a comment down below. Hit subscribe to keep up with future episodes. Thank you for giving a listen and letting our sponsors know you love really good emails.